real thin band right in here is the sack that, that God put around our heart to keep it in place and separate it from some of the other organs in your chest. So anyway, we've been separating this band out to get around the heart here. Yeah, so keep on following that. And uh, I'm elevating it, and this is the heart, the right ventricle of the heart that we're just taking off of it. And as you can see it, that they've become worn. They're kind of attached to each other. And so uh, it's just slowly convincing the heart to come off of the mm. lining. I'm thinking a lot more of this is done these days, we do surgery. Um, and it's just so much cha more challenging than a straightforward heart surgery. Because all of this, when, the, when you're in there the first time, all this just falls right open. Mm. Not the case here. Mm. Mm -hmm. See yeah, on this, but basically we've taken all the, the sac off of the surface of the heart, and that's why the heart looks like it's a little beaten up there, but it's okay. There's no bleeding from it. This part of the heart that you see, the way that the heart's formed um, inside mom's womb, you know, it, it's got a right side and a left side and a top and a bottom, and then it rolls over to the left and it turns slightly towards the, up towards the left arm. And so that's why the right side of the heart sits in front of the left side of the heart. This is the right ventricle, right here where my fingertips are. This is the right atrium. This right here is the ascending aorta. This gentleman's problem began when he was in mom's womb and the part of his aorta that goes around to the back and then goes down to his legs didn't develop. And so it was a little tight blockage down there, like a napkin ring around his aorta. And because of that and because of the physics of what happens in the womb, that distal part of the aorta did not develop. In, in comp the way that God made us is everything compensates. And so this first blood vessel off of the aortic arch here that you can't see with your camera is called the innominate artery. And it carries blood to the right arm and to the, the right side of your neck and your head and brain. So that gets bigger because the outflow to the aortic arch is increased. The resistance to flow is increased, so the flow somewhere else will increase, and that increases through the anomalous artery, and that gets bigger. In addition, he had associated with his the narrowing in the aorta, he had a, a bicuspid aortic valve, which ultimately leads to aortic stenosis. And when he was a teenager and 13 years of age or so, he went with, went to Texas at Texas Children's and had an, a valvuloplasty done to his aortic valve, which bought him all the time up to here. But after they do valvuloplasty, you develop aortic insufficiency, and that's really what he has. And that's why his heart has grown to such a large size. In addition to all that other stuff, he also has coronary artery disease, and so we're going to do two bypasses to the um, underside of his heart where there's some blockages there. All right? So all of this is going to be a sequence of events that hopefully is going to start happening kind of quick here. Um, and will in order to replace this part of his aorta, the tube right here, where this this big thing here, that's the aneurysmal part. In order to replace that, we're gonna have to turn off the bypass machine here and cool him down, is what we're planning on doing right now. And we could adapt that to something less invasive and less um, to him, but it would preserve the aorta up here. I just need to double check the size of the aorta up here, making sure it doesn't have to be replaced as well. And if that can stay, then we can avoid the circa rest.
How much, uh, what is this unit going to start now? 14-2. I think we have a pretty good solution to this. If, uh, if we cooperate, we can just replace the ascending and the aortic valve and do a tube graft and take him up to the point where the anomaly artery takes off. I'm just less likely to replace the anomaly because when I look at it, it doesn't look like an aneurysm. It just looks large because, uh, the, issue is because the aortic arch is so small. What we did here, after we did the bypass to that blood vessel out there, now we're opening up the aorta. The big blood vessel that comes out of the heart. 30 right. It brings all of that, all the blood to the body. And we're opening up the aorta and looking right at the very beginning of the aorta where the aortic valve is. And where his pathologic valve is. And we're evaluating everything inside here. Lift up from that. And take it comfortably away from where our final point of uh, transection will be. And uh, there should be like an eye pottery. Uh, She's got one up already. She's already got one up? Okay. Jason, okay. Jason can you uh, give me the wall sucker to the metal gap? Okay. Is it right behind this big aorta that we're taking now? is the pulmonary artery. We gotta make sure we don't take any of that. Because we're gonna need that. We're taking out all the unhealthy aorta that we're gonna sew to when we get done. Okay, this is right where they took the where they opened the aorta for his first, sur first surgery 40 years ago. And he's right there. I think it's still uh, And we look down here. Let me retract this desk in. Poor phone. You get a nice view of the aortic valve. It's been here functioning in its own way. Reaction around the aorta is going to make it better for us to sub to. Uh, head up please, roll with Antonio. So we look down in here. And we see the valve. This is why we're here. So we just retract the thing. That's good. Yeah. This was a congenitally bicuspid aortic valve, as we suspected. And it was just opened up on probably between this. This is the non coronary sinus. So this is called the right coronary sinus. And this is the left coronary sinus over here. And it looks like they opened deeper. Looks like they opened it up to make sure that there was adequate outflow for the aortic stenosis. I think it runs with them. Some of the other things that we look out for in this because the patient has the congenital component here is uh, your plate is off, right? Yes, sir. Because he has this congenital component, so of course we have to look for the electrical system and be mindful of that.
you know, this is a very kind of one. and it cuts the suture at the same time. actually uh, pretty well. I think that uh, as we looked at all of the issues that were facing him before surgery and then we talked about it, hopefully that helped him and his family to have a better understanding of what we were really dealing with. And today in the operating room, for the most part, I think things turned out as we anticipated. When we anticipate, we, we cover a spectrum of various uh, outcomes and issues that could be addressed. And today everything fit kind of within that general that general context of what we thought was coming. And within that, I, we were totally successful at each of the primary, three primary issues that we needed to address. His aortic valve, his ascending aortic aneurysm, and his um, coronary disease with the uh, bypass to the uh, circumflex coronary artery. The issues that, um, and he's gonna benefit from those in the long term. Uh, certainly most from the aortic valve pathology, which was pretty pretty remarkable and, and extensive. But um, the real challenge um, uh, for Mr. Luz is going to be really dealing with the irreversible effects of his congenital heart disease and the long-standing aortic insufficiency that he's had. Because his heart has changed and it's enlarged and, and thickened, and uh, that's not going to completely come back to normal. We would anticipate at least a little bit of uh, drift back towards normal. And right now, the remarkable thing is he's so, you know, his, his spirit is so strong and his, um, that I think he's going to do real well, and I think this will serve him well, and certainly his heart's not going to get worse. Um, and that's going to be the main thing for now as he goes forward in life and hopefully has many, many decades ahead of him. Um, but uh, at this point in time, he's gotten basically all of, the, um, all of the intervention that could help him reach his expected longevity at this point. We did a eight-plus hour surgery. They don't typically go that long, but I, I got to ask when... On a long surgery, what do you like about being a heart surgeon? <laughs> um, without question, the uh, 
the privilege of getting to do what I do. Um, think about it. Yeah, what you just saw in there um, is is remarkable. It's not it, even when you're tired and you're frustrated or you're tired and exhausted. Um, you, you don't let that the true blessing that it is and the gift you get to do that. You don't let you don't lose that. Um, I don't lose that. I uh, I love what I do.